Welcome back everyone and we're glad you can join us for some both deep content but before we start I have one question for you What are those? What do you know about you know? No, not that you know Definitely not that ball of crazy I mean you know from Black Clover Like what do you actually know? He's Asta's rival, yes we've heard that a million times already He's better than Asta at nearly everything cause what good shonen rival isn't superior in nearly every single way to the main character and finally he has the same goal as Asta to be the wizard king because that's quite literally the definition of a rival right? But what if I told you there's more to Yuno than just all that? What if he's just not a plank of wood? It may be hard to believe but there's quite a bit to Yuno that we don't see and plenty more that we don't understand. Despite the fact that Tabata may only show rival Yuno, there's a more interesting character behind that cliche. If you'd like to hear more, stick around as we give our top 5 things you didn't know about Yuno. You don't fuck with neck, bro. Before we get started, we have an exciting sponsor to fill you in on. Crossing Void, an anime turn based RPG game. This game is literally what every anime fan has always dreamt of. Well I did. It features a couple of our favourite animes from over 25 series. A few being Durarara, Toradora, Soda Online, A Certain Magical Index and I could go on but I'm telling you guys there is a choice of over 50 characters from these series where you can pick from and face off in actual combat with each of them. Yeah, Yes, you can finally play and see your waifus or husband those who fight off against each other. And each of these characters are equipped with their own unique battle skills. This game went balls deep and put a lot of focus on the small details. Like you can literally use Kirito's special starburst stream, Mikoto's railgun ability and see all of this clash in one game. And to make it even more awesome, you can mix and match the skill set between characters to create cross skills. Like check out Asuna and Yuki using their cross skills to wipe out Kirito from the map. Now guys, this ain't all about the in-game battles. There are also unimagined brand new storylines specific to Crossing Void. Along with that, you can unlock exclusive illustrations and voice recordings as you get closer and closer to your characters. So what are you guys waiting for? Join us in playing this game, roll the gacha and collect your favourite waifus, upgrade them to make them stronger as you progress through this insane anime crossover. If you pre-register now, you can grab yourself some special rewards and get yourself started. And if that's not enough, cause you know we go balls deep, by participating on the Crossing Voids Facebook and Twitter community events, you can earn a chance for more rewards. So follow their official Facebook and Twitter pages, click on the link in the description and comment section below and register now. It's free and it will be helping us out. With that, let's cue the intro. So let's begin with Yuno's origin. One of the many mysteries regarding both Asta and Yuno are their origin. Every good character needs a good origin. And yeah, we saw him get picked up as a baby by the priest, but where did he come from? At first, we all thought that maybe it didn't matter, but the series has slowly but surely hinted at what it could possibly be. We don't know where he actually came from or who are his parents, but we do know for a fact he is somehow, in some way or another connected to the elves, and more specifically the elf leader Lich. This is a question the fan base is confused about so I might as well clarify it here as you guys ask me these questions on Twitter or Instagram in DMs I'm here for you let, let me answer this right You know may not be Lich's son but his body was used for that very elf's reincarnation This is because when Lich and Tetia were going to get married she was pregnant for around 5 to 6 months Which meant the baby had a soul however everyone died right This baby also got reincarnated since later on we discover it was the devil that used the powers on the elves and only the elf race themselves this is why Tetia does not rebirth since she is a human however the baby inside of her was half human and half elf the supposed baby that Lich said himself that will help shape a path of understanding between races this just happens to be the case in the future 500 years later once the baby rebirths into Yuno to help defeat the devil with Asta now you're probably wondering since Yuno was taken over by 
Divine Elf, why didn't it take over Yuno's personality just like the others, right? Why can Yuno retain his soul and use the elf powers at the same time? What is this hacks mode that this guy has just because he's the rival? This is boring, right? Ass pull. Well, logically, this is because a baby has not formed a personality yet. I mean, the baby hasn't even been born yet to have experiences that will shape its hatred for humans or its mind, right? The baby's soul is innocent. Lich's child would not have the curse of the wicked the other elves would have, which is to hate humans since it wasn't alive to witness anything wrong the humans did in the first place and is half human itself. Lich's child does the opposite and it helps Yuno save the two races as for sort. For example, at the end of the arc, Licht even thanks Yuno before leaving for allowing him to experience a memory with his unborn child and what it would have been like if the elf was alive. He then goes to the afterlife and I'm gonna presume that the baby went to the afterlife too to have a very good time with uh, Tetia. We all get it right, we are all on the same page. But now we have to wonder why the hell the elf baby chose Yuno? Since every single elf that got possessed was a noble since they have a great amount of mana just like them and the royals are the ones that killed the elves in the past and their lineage is the reason why they get reincarnated into them because they are so similar right so this confirms that you know must be secretly from the lineage of tetia who is the sister of the first wizard king right or at the very least you know's parents must be nobles this would cause him to have natural talent and mana as well as explain the fact as to why arthur and you know they had royal robes and handwriting on their clothing already when they were left at the church how is that even possible on top of that you know's necklace this necklace is so important that it connects him to nobility and elves once again i'll explain why later on in the video now although this isn't 100 confirmed by yuki tabata himself you have to remember that he's my friend and bullseye prediction magic is just way too powerful we all know this by now come on now guys but i'm pretty sure this could be possible in the future and subscribe and hit the notification button as i cover black clover on a regular basis on the channel basically in the past life yuna was half elf only made human by the probable mother tetia who is presumed to be a vermilion descendant by the way but the vermilion family isn't known 500 years later now we all know why because the royals are corrupt they were erased from history meaning that you know and mimosa secretly may be cousins too you know may actually be a royal it's all a possibility now this is just a theory as i'm saying this again but the history of this character has been kept such a secret that we can only theorize on this one that's a little slack you know what i'm saying wait where are you all going no, no, leave. Come on, can we talk about it? Well, hopefully most of you are still watching. Anyway, we've got four more things we're confident most of you didn't know. So let's jump into it. You know's last name. Okay, so I know all of you might have heard of this already in our five things you didn't know about Ask the Video. But it still applies to you know. And there are still plenty of people who do not know this. Especially since there are so many people who only watch the anime. Anyway, you know once had a last name. It's a noticeable fact that neither he nor Arthur have a last name in the official release. Least. There was once a one-shot chapter, right? None of you heard about this, but there was a one-shot chapter manga that held core cool details of Black Clover on how it came to be. The story was also very different. Everything from character designs and the way things happen to what happened in the story is slightly different from the real manga we know and read each week. By the way, if you haven't already, read Black Clover because it's superior in every way. One of the many differences was that Asta and Yuno had last names, and they're quite interesting. Asta's last name was Staria and Yuno's last name was Crossley. This can be interpreted to mean Star Cross, meaning bad luck. It's kind of ironic considering they always seem to have the best of luck, even when bad things happen, right? Maybe it's just a nice little detail Tabata had in mind, or maybe if you all smash that like button, and there might have been something more to it, right? But I'm pretty sure in the future, if it is revealed that they are named Staria and Crossley, Staria Crossley will go with their prophecy. It will also go with their rivalry of how they do have bad luck as they had the worst of times they were both left at the church they both had a wrecked childhood but they make the best of it they don't have bad luck they turn their bad luck into good luck because that's the story of black clover that's what tabata is trying to represent okay now let's talk about yuno's concept creation now how did tabata come up with yuno's character design and personality wait i mean 
Does he really have a personality? I'm joking, sorry, I just had to. That one was too easy. A lot of characters are based on characters to come before them. You see this all the time. You know is no exception, but his situation is a little different. As opposed to taking inspiration from someone else's work, Tabata took a lot from Heidi, the main protagonist from his previous manga, Hungry Joker, that was cut short after 24 chapters. Tabata decided to make the main character of Black Clover dramatically different from Heidi. However, he still loved Heidi's personality and and wanted to give it to a different character. So Yuno ended up receiving a similar personality or you know <laughs> like thereof as well as a similar appearance to him. I do have to wonder why this was done however as many complained about not liking Heidi before Hungry Joker's end. And Yuno is also somewhat complained about as people say he has no depth and is boring. This is especially interesting because it seems as though Tabata has attempted to make this character three times. Heidi was just the beginning stages of who we know as Yuno right now. And before the official first chapters released least there was a one-shot manga, remember? Yuno was essentially more or less the same character in the end, but the story he was involved in, while it ultimately had the same conclusion, attempted to set up a very different world. How does this relate to Yuno? Well, most of it doesn't, but the final act of the chapter, the big fight that we know in the anime where Asta gets his five-leaf grimoire, it seems to be less with him overall in that fight. It's still got the whole thing about someone being all jealous because they're not as cool as him and they didn't get a four-leaf grimoire just like Yuno, but this chapter made no effort to show what Yuno could do. Not once did it show his magic or how he used it. In fact, we only saw three types of magic and none of it really given a type on what it was. In the official version, we saw Yuno use his wind magic twice and even more in the anime. In addition, he was also stabbed in the one shot but didn't react at all. He didn't even seem hurt, which is boring. If that were to happen in the official release, any character would scream in pain like, Oh my God! <gasps> But I guess that's just not how this works or something. Finally, his design is a little different. Not dramatically, but you can tell. For one, he wears a robe just like he does in the official release, but it resembles the Black Bull robe more than anything. It's also worth pointing out that everyone is wearing a robe in the one shot, which makes him stand out even less. But since we are on the topic of Tabata basing Yuno's design from Heidi, let's compare the two, shall we? Side by side, in the original design of Heidi, we can clearly tell that Tabata took his hairstyle, the shape of his face, and the dull eyes from him to improve into Yuno. Yuno also does the same expressions as him from the anime when they are reacting to something. For example, when they are thinking or amazed by something or even reacting to a joke. Basically, what I'm trying to say is they are both have the same expressive demeanor. Not only this, but their personalities are exactly the same in terms of their cornerstones and what makes who they are. Since Tabata has admitted this himself, let me explain what he means. Heidi is described to be a very smart and intelligent scientist known by his famed title, Mysterious Genius Scientist Boy. That's so boring in itself, no wonder this shit got cancelled. <laughs> Anyway, he was known for this at a very young age. As a scientist, he has an extremely serious behavior, and he doesn't get distracted by any sort of events when working. He hardly gets impressed or amazed by things that most people would. Despite this, he is a very determined person as he studied and researched during his entire life to find out the truth behind the glowing corpse. Who does that sound like? This sounds exactly like Yuno in Black Clover Universe. Just replace his determined goal with wanting to be the Wizard King just like Asta. Tabata himself stated that the true synergy works in archetypal figures. The cool and dark rival, the nonchalant mentor and the sadistic villain. He wants to do the opposites of characters. Asta is a copy of him in terms of personality. Again, watch my 5 things you didn't know about Asta video to get all the knowledge that you want. But basically, he wanted to create oppositions between the protagonists. That's why they are so different. Overall, I still feel like Yuno turned out great and I know he'll get some great development in the future arcs as he won't make the same mistakes as Gen and I in fact boldly predict it so you know it's gonna come true you know what I'm saying. But next up is Yuno's pendant. So if you have read the manga then you may know this one already but some might have forgotten about it as it wasn't focused on too heavily. I mean some of you ask me in the comments all the time what is the pendant? What is the pendant? And I'm like are you guys even concentrating? What's going on here? Anyway as we all know Yuno wears this necklace around his neck with a weird rock attached to it. It's always been a mystery as to what it is or how it fits into the story. However, in the elf arc, a little later on, Yuno has this pendant taken and apparently it's a magic stone. Now, magic stones are well... 
stones but they amplify your magic power and ability now whether you know has unconsciously used the stone all his life and that's why his magic power is so through the roof has remained to be seen but we know he's had it since he was a baby but we don't know why he had it since a baby as i explained earlier in the video throughout the manga some emphasis has been placed on the pendant at times mostly by thieves who feel like it will be sold for a lot of money now maybe they just saw something shiny and thought hmm, maybe i can get rich of this kid but there's also the possibility that some of them already knew and they wanted to steal this magic power magic stones as we know are important in the series and have remained the focus of almost each arc as they are given our heroes something to work towards it's also given the antagonist the eye of the midnight sun a goal and reason to oppose the clover kingdom so for someone to just walk around with one of these dangling on their neck is a little dangerous to say the least but apparently it's not uncommon for those with strong magic to wear them on their person as both fulgo leon oh my god i butchered it i'm sorry guys I know how to pronounce it, but it always comes out wrong. Okay, Fugo, Fugolion. I don't know how to pronounce his name, man. <laughs> Fugolion. Fugolion. There you go, Fugolion. As both Fogolion Vermilion and the Queen of Witches both wore them openly and used them to make their magic more powerful if you guys can remember. This may be no big deal now but when the series started this was a big mystery and I'm glad it ended up being so important and maybe in the future more information will be revealed. Now let's go to fun facts since there isn't much about you know. Let's talk about quick facts, quick information that none of you guys know so keep up with me this is blazing round time. You know said his favorite thing is the sky. He's a Libra, his birth is October 4th, same as Asta. He's 172 centimeters tall. His blood type is AB. He gained all his ambitions from Asta. His favorite food is Tatios from Hodge Village, his hometown. He's extremely competitive. He used to be a big crybaby. He's the first person to receive a four leaf clover grimoire since Patri when he reincarnated in Lake Body. Before joining the Magic Knights, he never had his own room. He's the only known Magic Knight that isn't a captain that can use Mana Zone. That's it. That's all we have for today. But if you liked the video and you learned something new about this character, why not subscribe and hit the notification? bell smash that like button and never miss a bold deep episode you know what i'm saying also let me know what character to do next on from what anime that's something i need to know too i want to provide what you guys want anyway guys i'll see you in the next video thanks for joining me see ya